This looks normal. This doesn't. I became an amputee about a month and a half ago, and I'd love to tell you a story of how that actually came to be, but it is 14 years in the making. Let's start at the beginning. Also, before I begin, let me note that there are pet rats running around in this room, so if you see them in the background, don't worry, my house is not infested. I loved horses from the time that I could remember. I was your classic, uh, stereotypical girl who just went on a pony for her birthday. Now, I was able to start horseback riding at a local barn when I was 12. This is Bridget, everybody. She may be joining us for the rest of the video and trying to steal my earrings. I told you before, Bridget, you can't do that. When I was 13, I got to go on a trail ride in this big open field. I had always dreamed of doing this and we took our horses, me with two of my friends, galloping. And it was the, honestly, probably the most amazing moment of my young 13 years on planet Earth until Georgia, the horse I was riding, tripped. I fell over her right shoulder and landed on my neck. There's I, no reason that I should have shattered my ankle, but when I came to, because I'm pretty sure I blacked out for a moment, that is what happened. My ankle was immediately swollen and black and blue, and long story short, I ended up at the hospital. They told me that it was a very unique break. My tibia had broken in half and uh, been shoved up an inch into my leg. Doctors thought it was a really cool break because they had never seen it before and it's never a good thing when doctors are like, hey, come see this x-ray, we've never seen this before. And I had to wait a few days to have surgery because my ankle was too swollen. They did it, no big deal, it should have been done. But two months later, got an x-ray, found out that it was healing wrong, they had to break my ankle again. I've always been a really active person. I um, participated in martial arts and swimming and hiking and all different kinds of things, but just lived in pain all the time and was taking painkillers pain all the time. and. Uh, couldn't stand it and this last year it got to a point where I couldn't even walk and That's not a life that I want to lead in pain all the time Now I was always told that when there was too much pain in my ankle from the fusion We would replace it and that you know if we had to replace it We might have to replace it again and that someday way down the road. I might have to have an amputation I like at age you know 70 and age 70 became age 27 this year because when I actually looked into the reality of what an ankle replacement looked like and when I actually got doctor's opinions on it, it turned out that is a, not a good idea for me. I'd still be living in pain, I'd have very limited mobility. The failure rate for ankle replacements is really high. I'd probably have to continue having surgeries and I couldn't do it anymore. I wanted to live life, embrace life, stop living from surgery to surgery and from more pain medication to more pain medication and so I made the decision a couple months ago that we were going to go ahead and amputate because it was going to have to happen in a couple years anyways whether or not we did the replacement first and I didn't want to have to keep having surgeries and living in pain until that point anyways. I'm young, I'm otherwise healthy, I'm light. There are good conditions for an amputation to work and so I decided to go ahead with it and it is the weirdest thing. I can't express to you how weird it is to make a decision to chop your leg off. I am grateful that I've never had to wake up out of like a traumatic situation and be missing a limb, which is the situation for many people. Having to make the call that I am going to walk into a hospital, go under and wake up without a limb is bizarre. It's just weird, guys. <laughs> But I decided that that was the best thing. I eventually had my family's support, um, though it was hard for them. And on October 11th, I walked into UC Health in Denver and got into that hospital bed and put on that hospital gown and waited for the anesthesiologist to come in and give me the good drugs. And my little rat is eating my books. <laughs> what, what are you stealing? Okay. Rats are thieves. If you didn't know, they take glee in taking everything they can from you. This is just, this is one more thing in the line of many thefts. We're gonna have to have a conversation, Bridget. Bridget. Sorry about that brief but adorable interruption, guys. As I was saying, I waited for the anesthesiologists, I kissed my husband goodbye, I hugged my mom, and then I kind of laid there in 
I, semi panic shock. I don't know. What are you supposed to feel when you're going into surgery to have your leg amputated? I didn't cry. Um, I kind of expected to. And the thing that I was scared of was waking up from that surgery and being like gripped by regret immediately thinking like, holy hell, what have I done? Like, why did I do this? Why couldn't I have just continued to live in pain for the sake of having a leg? I'm gonna look different for the rest of my life. I'm 27 and I had my leg amputated. Like, why did this happen? I thought that that might be what I thought when I woke up and it wasn't. And I'm so grateful that, that it wasn't. I woke up and the nerve block didn't work. Uh, if you don't know what that is, they like kill all the nerves in your leg basically before a surgery like this. And so I woke up feeling everything. I was crying and screaming in pain. And so they called my husband in to hold my hand as they got pain under control. But I remember thinking, even then, I am so glad I did this because I can finally work towards something. Like there's a light at the end of the tunnel instead of just working towards like more and more and more surgeries and even though this is complicated, even though this is hard, even though this is really painful, there's hope. Like I might be able to run again someday. I, I can maybe walk my dogs again. I can go around the block with people, you know? So there's hope again and that's super exciting and thrilling and amazing and keeps me going when things are painful and when phantom pain is bizarre and when people stare and it's odd and in all the weird parts. I still have never had a moment of regret. This was never what I would have chosen for my life, you know, in a perfect world, but we don't live in a perfect world. And so it's been, a, it's been an interesting journey and I am definitely on board for the ride. So for everyone who asked, that is the extended story of how I lost my leg. And before you ask, yes, I do ride horses still. I can't do it um, often. Well, I'm not doing it at all currently as I'm recovering from amputation. But when I figure out how to ride a horse, Without a leg, you bet I will. I love horses. I just think they're the most incredible, beautiful creatures on planet Earth. And it was not the horse's fault that I fell off of her. She tripped. I trip all the time, like it happens. Uh, so I do uh, still ride whenever I get the chance. I love it. That is it for me today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Oh my God, my ride just fell. She's fine. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. See you guys, she's in one piece. <laughs>